there in the center screen in Mission Control Moscow, you can see uh, the crews erecting the stand around the Soyuz craft. Should hopefully uh, be getting that video feed uh, shortly. The search and recovery forces on site uh, with the vehicle. With the stand erected, uh, they'll begin uh, extracting the crew from the Soyuz vehicle, which touched down successfully at 8.58 p.m. Central. And here we are now getting live views from the landing site. Again, the stand erected around the vehicle, the search and recovery forces ready to uh, shortly begin the extraction of the three crew members from the Soyuz craft. Here they are. Are you getting ready? Uh, no. feeling well. We're feeling fine. Are you ready? Misha, attention, we're opening the hatch.
Yuri Valentinovich. Good afternoon. Be careful, be careful. Yoder, hello. Welcome back. Again, at this point, the hatch, the vehicle is open. The search and recovery forces um, about to begin the extraction of the crew from the capsule. Just around 8.17 in the morning right now in Kazakhstan. Uh, do you have Romanov's uh, kit nearby? Yes, I think Romanov can take it. Okay, let's start taking them out. How are you doing? Vadim, do you need help? Hold on a second. Do I need to unstrap completely? No. Do you need straps? Misha. Vadim will figure it out. Hold on. Yeah, 
Did you free up the legs? Stop, 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 stop. Hold on, stop. Sit down. Okay. Let's stand up. I I got you. Oh, done. Uh, be careful with the legs. Okay, let's sit him down. Okay, I'm holding him. Let him sit down for a little bit. And right now we see Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Turin, the first one being lifted out of the capsule. Misha, there is no rush. Each of the astronauts experiencing gravity for the first time in over six months. Starts swinging his legs up. So a few physical uh, effects uh, per the norm. Be careful. Sit down. Stay like that. Okay, let's go for a ride. Okay, hold him, hold him. So again, each of the crew members uh, removed one by one and moved uh, just a little bit uh, away from the capsule into a waiting chair until all three are out successfully. Lift his leg. Lift his legs. Did anyone drop this? Welcome back. No, just... I think we're fine. Just don't touch anything. Do you need sunglasses, Misha? No, I'm fine. I would like to get the first readings. Hold on, hold on. Hold on a second, there is no hurry. Everything is good. What's the pressure? The descent module is in the vertical position. The crew members are being uh, taken out, evacuated out of the descent module. Олег Николаевич, hello. Hello. 
Heart rate is uh, about 100. Again, the first crew member out, Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Turin, being seen to uh, by flight surgeons. Uh, they'll take a couple of uh, initial uh, medical readings, both here uh, and usually inside of a medical tent uh, constructed just a short ways away. Turin, again, the most veteran space flyer among the group returning today with 532 days total spent in space now. No, everything is not Generally, each of the crew members getting a chance to uh, speak with loved ones uh, right upon arrival. The landing was just wonderful. Everything was perfect. The, all the um, equipment and hardware uh, worked. So again, Turin, the first one uh, out of the capsule so far. Uh, the Soyuz landing upright, the teams having the uh, craft uh, in place and uh, the extraction stand around it. Uh, Turin was the, uh, the commander of the uh, 37 Soyuz vehicle, uh, the Soyuz TMA-11M, during all of its uh, descent and re-entry operations today. Still inside, NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio and Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata waiting their turn. Representatives from each space agency on site at the landing zone. Would you like some tea with lemon water? But why are you taking it all off? The previous time you took it all away. And now we see Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata, the second to be extracted from the uh, Soyuz capsule. Wakata was the commander of the International Space Station over the last couple of months. It was the first Japanese commander uh, of the international complex. Wakata now a total cumulative space flight time of 348 days in space spread across four flights. He's also a veteran of uh, two shuttle missions and then uh, one expedition or a range of expeditions a few years ago, uh, being a flight engineer in expeditions 18 through 20. So all is part of one increment. Wakata now being carried over to his seat alongside Turin. Thank you, you're welcome.
And again, two of the three space flyers now out of the Soyuz craft. Here you can see Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata uh, now out of the capsule in his seat, going through uh, the same initial medical checkouts uh, that Turin just went through. And uh, each of these crew members typically undergoes immediately upon uh, recovery from the Soyuz. With these two out, next up will be NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio, uh, who was the board engineer inside the left seat of the Soyuz craft uh, for all of the night's events. So again, two of the three already out of the capsule, standing by for views of NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio, who will be the third and final crew member to be extracted from this Soyuz vehicle, which landed successfully in Kazakhstan at 8.58 p.m. Central Time. All of tonight's events going off without a hitch. The three returning after 188 days spent in space and on board the International Space Station. <laughs> Misha, what would you like to eat right now as a snack? Well, some red wine. Well, we'll skip the red wine. I'm just, I'm not saying you have to provide it right now. You said, well, would like to, you know, that would be something I would like to. Do we have tea? Uh, would you like some tea? Maybe some water? Uh, briefly, what do you think the result of the increment um, is? Did you manage to achieve all the tasks? Uh, I think we could have backed in more. Here now cutting back to a view on top of the Soyuz vehicle as search and recovery forces working to uh, extract the third and final crew member, Rick Mastracchio, the NASA astronaut amongst the group. Meanwhile, Mikhail Turin and Koichi Wakata already out and seated, being attended to by uh, flight surgeons and other search and recovery forces personnel. And there's our first view of NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio again being 
Uh, removed from the Soyuz craft now, the third and final crew member coming down this evening uh, or morning if you're over in Kazakhstan. Uh, he'll be handed down by the search and recovery forces here and moved over to join his uh, fellow Expedition 39 crew members. But again, with that, all three crew members now removed from the Soyuz vehicle. Why don't we go ahead and get a quick update now. Uh, NASA Public Affairs Officer Rob Navius is standing by at the landing zone. Rob, real quick, why don't you give us uh, your first impressions? How, do, how, are, how does everything seem to be going out there? Good to talk to you, Dan. We're about uh, five feet away from the uh, Soyuz TMA-11M spacecraft. All three crew members now in their reclining chairs after a very uh, swift recovery. In stark contrast to what we saw two months ago, just two months ago, where the Expedition 38 crew was greeted uh, in an ice storm, zero degrees Fahrenheit, snow up to everybody's knees. It is a superb scintillating morning here, uh, about 90 miles southeast of Dizkazgan. Temperatures near 70 degrees, a cloudless sky to greet the Expedition 39 crew. This uh, trio began their 188-day mission back on November 7th, uh, carrying the Olympic torch to the International Space Station. Today, uh, six months later, they ended their flight uh, in uh, with an Olympic gold performance, sticking the landing upright of their Soyuz spacecraft to wrap up uh, their six months in space. The inflatable orange medical tent is uh, nearby, just about 40 yards away. Uh, after a, a few minutes here in their chairs, the crew will be taken sequentially into that medical tent, uh, will doff their Soka launch and entry suits, and begin what is called a, a series of pilot field tests, very critical uh, data collection uh, opportunities uh, to see uh, in the initial moments after a landing how a returning crew from a long-duration flight uh, reacts uh, back in a gravity environment. Uh, this will uh, involve a series of squats. Uh, the crew will bend over. This uh, will apply to Mastracchio and Wakata. In this particular case, the first data set uh, to be uh, offered in the medical tent in which uh, they will uh, conduct these tests data collection uh, not only here, but back at the uh, airport in Prestwick, Scotland, after Mastracchio and Wakata stopped for a refueling opportunity for the NASA plane that will take them back to Houston. Uh, the landing couldn't have been more perfect. It was a bullseye landing. The first of the search and recovery helicopters were on the deck about uh, four minutes after uh, the touchdown of the Soyuz vehicle. The medical tent was quickly erected, and uh, as you uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, Mikhail Turin, the Soyuz commander, uh, was extracted from the top hatch of the Soyuz vehicle just minutes after that. The, uh, the atmosphere here is, uh, frankly, jubilant. Uh, this, uh, this search and recovery team, Ros Aviazza, the civilian search and recovery forces, they have this down to a fine science right now and uh, have made a very swift work in recovering the crew. Uh, I might also mention that uh, now that the crew members are out of the Soyuz vehicle, some of the critical cargo uh, will begin to be removed from the Soyuz, critical items that were brought back to Earth uh, to be uh, uh, analyzed by the spacecraft uh, specialists and some of those items uh, to be returned to NASA for uh, post-flight evaluation, items that were squirreled away in the Soyuz vehicle uh, to be brought back to Earth for early return, the early cargo return back to Houston. Back to you, Dan. All right. Well, thank you very much, Rob, for that quick update. Like you said, the weather cooperating much, uh, a lot more this time, so good to see that you guys aren't you know, knee-deep in snow. Uh, best of luck on your return, and we'll see you back here uh, in Houston very shortly. All right, Dan, thanks very much. So with that now, getting a smile from Rick Mastracchio, the third and final crew member to be removed from the Soyuz craft following the three successful touchdown at 8.58 p.m. Central Time uh, this evening. Uh, the time uh, just uh, 7.58 in the morning in Kazakhstan at the time of touchdown. As you just heard, uh, the crew uh, will next uh, move on to uh, some medical checkouts in the medical tent erected not too far away from uh, the landing zone. Uh, part of this uh, just routine medical checkouts, but also important data gathering for 
uh, the multitude of uh, experiments that these astronauts are subjected to themselves uh, during their long duration space flights, each acting as test subjects for a number of uh, human health and performance research activities uh, while they spend the up to six months in space. Many of these uh, designed to focus on uh, countermanding a lot of the negative effects that weightlessness can have on the human body when uh, we are exposed to it for long durations of time. A lot of those studies also, though, having direct impacts uh, to people here on the Earth as many debilitating diseases will present the same symptoms uh, that our bodies uh, present uh, when exposed to microgravity, things like bone loss uh, and muscle dents and muscle atrophy. Uh, found in many degenerative diseases, so a lot of these data takes on uh, will be very important, uh, not only for the ongoing research of uh, protecting humans during long duration space flight, but also uh, for influencing a lot of medical procedures down here on the ground. But for now, all three crew members again uh, in a jovial mood outside of their Soyuz spacecraft now, touching down after a flawless re entry and landing. Rick Mastracchio, the NASA astronaut on the right there in the center, Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Turin, all the way on the left, uh, Koichi Wakata of the Japanese Space Agency, the first Japanese commander of the International Space Station, all three wrapping up 188 days in space with this landing this evening. Again, next up, the crew uh, fairly shortly will begin to move over to the medical tents. Following all of that testing, uh, the helicopters will then transport the crew back to the airfield at Karaganda, at which point uh, the crew will split up and head back to their respective home bases. Mikhail Turin headed to the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia. Uh, Rick Mastracchio and uh, Koichi Wakata headed back here to Houston uh, aboard the NASA 992 jet. Uh, Coming back here to the Johnson Space Center, Mikhail Turin at this point being carried away first towards that medical tent. Next up uh, will be uh, Koichi Wakata and then following immediately behind him, NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio. You got it. Okay, let's move. So they're already carrying them. I think we need to take the bags. Here you can see each of the crew members being carried into that orange inflatable medical tent uh, set up just a few feet away from the landing zone. Do you take enough photographs?